It's now time to bring our feature on the show today. We are focusing on Nigeria's rating as the best economy in Africa based on its performance of its GDP. Now, the International Monetary Fund disclosed this in its 2020 World Economic Outlook. The global economic body ranked Nigeria as one of the world's top 26 economies with an average GDP of over $442 million. Countries are sorted by nominal GDP estimates from financial and statistical institutions, which are then calculated at market or government official exchange rates. Nominal GDP does not take into account differences in the cost of living in different countries, and the result can vary from one year to another based on fluctuations in the exchange rates of the country's currency. Well, joining me now via Skype to discuss the economic outlook for Nigeria for the year 2021 and other macroeconomic indices we have to deal with, I have Dr. Yabo Masha, member of the Presidential Economic Advisory Council. Good to have you on the breakfast show today, ma'am. Yes, good morning. Now, the economy of sub-Saharan Africa is expected to expand by 3.1% this year after a contraction of more than 3% recorded in the year 2020. Now, the trend in Nigeria's main macroeconomic indicators suggests that the country has a limited growth uh, trajectory. If you take a look at the population, unemployment as well as inflation rates growing at faster rates. Against the backdrop of the COVID-19 now, what pattern of growth do you see in the first two quarters of this year? Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this interview, and um, I wish you all a happy new year. Happy new year. Yes, indeed. Um, after the um, downturn in economic uh, developments of last year, 2020, 2021 is projected to be better in terms of growth in a majority of uh, African countries. So you are right there. For Nigeria, the assumption that underlies the 2021 budget is that growth, the economy will grow at 3%. Now, this is achievable, but it's a bit ambitious. But um, if you look at some of the developments in the latter part of 2020, the, the economy was already coming out of the contraction induced by COVID and the, um, and the decline in oil prices. So we had um, a, a relatively better quarter three and quarter four looks like it's also going to be good because of the um, recovery in the oil prices. So 3% is something that is achievable for the Nigerian economy in 2021. Now, in terms of um, how it will play out in the quarters, it depends on um, what, um, how soon the budget is implemented. The budget was approved before the beginning of the financial year, which is a very good signal. So I assume that um, implementation will resume almost um, immediately. So we, we, we will go into 2021 with a lot of momentum, and I think that um, the first two quarters and indeed the rest of the year will be quite um, good for, mm. for, the, for the economy. Of course, that depends on how the COVID pandemic plays out and um, if we're able to <clears throat> roll out the vaccine and also um, developments in the oil sector. Mm. Now, yeah. the growth trajectory, yes, it's not been as um, strong as we would like it to be. But uh, if we are able to get 3% uh, growth and with a population growth of 2.6%, then that will be the first time in seven years that the economy will be growing at a faster rate than inflation, uh, than uh, population. Mm -hmm. And also in the budget, the inflation rate assumed is 11.95. If central bank is able to deliver on that um, inflation rate, that would also be a, a significant achievement given that the inflation rate as of um, last year is hovering around at 15 percent. So mm -hmm. that will then allow the real um, production to increase and employers to re demand for more labor in the labor intensive sectors. And I think um, it's going to go on and um, extend into the decade. 
If I'm a button here now, as of December the 10th last year, external reserves had lost over 8.2% uh, of its value since the beginning of the year. Now, we have limited forex inflows due to the COVID-19 exerted pressure on export receipts and also financial inflows in the year. How do we now begin to mitigate uh, the transmission of shocks from the uh, international economy on the local economy and also deal with the repayment plan for the borrowings we've seen so far and we expect to fund the year 2021? Um, if, you, uh, I, 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 if you look at the records, I think since the um, Paris club exit, we have been um, very diligent in meeting our obligations to external creditors. So um, in a growing economy and with um, decent uh, revenue, domestic revenue mobilization, I don't see any problem in meeting the obligations. As far as how we're able to um, limit the shocks from the external environment to the local economy, that's a very important question because Nigeria is a very open economy. The trade to GDP ratio is around 33%. So that tells me that it's an economy that needs to pursue the kind of policies that improve the sentiment of trade uh, of, uh, so that credit lines, trade lines um, can remain open. What can, the, what can policies achieve? I think in the medium to um, long term, attention needs to focus on some of those non-oil um, sectors that are doing well in the export sphere. So that would enable us to diversify the sources of foreign exchange in the economy that comes into the economy, rather than being too dependent on oil or too dependent on external developments. Mm -hmm. But in the immediate term, there's also need to build confidence in the economy by um, meeting our obligations in a timely manner. Backlogs of foreign exchange um, should be cleared as soon as possible so that um, it doesn't create the kind of um, perception that reduces uh, the ability of the external players, external um, financial organizations to deal with us. Of course, um, I expect that such payments will be done in a systematic way. Okay, wrapping up conversations now, the latest IMF report on Nigeria's gross domestic product in the year 2020 estimated uh, Nigeria's GDP pegged at about 448 uh, billion US dollars. This made it Nigeria, uh, this made Nigeria the biggest economy in Africa. Now, the same report also indicates that Nigeria's economy will contract by 4.3% this year, 2021. Earlier in 2020, both IMF and the World Bank had cautioned Nigeria on the dangers of rising debt levels. Now, finally, the Nigerian Stock Exchange also rose by 5.7% this year, making it also the world's best performing stock market, according to Bloomberg. So can you now help assist a layman to understand and put together these seemingly contradictory uh, statements or information? Yes, um, yes, indeed. Um, the, uh, re the, the latest uh, assessment of uh, GDP, nominal GDP, ranks Nigeria as the highest, I've been having the largest economy in Africa, as you rightly pointed out. But this is just a measure of size, it is not a measure of performance. So, what measures performance is the growth rate of GDP which measures how well the economy did in a particular year relative to the previous year. And on that score, the economy um, contracted, like many economies did um, all over the world. It's not mutually exclusive. A company, uh, the largest economy in the world, indeed, can also be the worst performing economy. It's uh, quite similar to the tallest uh, boy in the class being the one that comes last or not being the one that comes first. So that needs to be understood. Regarding the performance of the stock exchange, the, the, I haven't seen the rating, but I, I take your word for it, and I've read, I've seen some headlines in that regard. But the stock market itself measures changes in prices from one period to the other. In general, it tends to be detached from what is happening in the economy because 
it is being driven by a different uh, set of sentiments. So what you see, you could see the stock price or asset prices in a particular sector or in some companies rising very fast. But when you look at the fundamentals of the company, the company may not be doing that well. So it's, um, it's not something that um, we can relate to each other. Um, yes, it's good to be um, the best performing stock exchange in the world. At least that's a good news. That's, it, it's good to be the best in something for Nigeria. But um, it's not something we should extend to overall economic performance. Mm. And don't you think this also would also affect the currency performance as well? Looking at the assumptions we've seen so far in the 2021 budget, and how realistic do you think the Naira would also trade favorably against the greenback and other uh, global currencies alike? Okay, um, the budget assumption for the exchange rate is 379 Naira to the dollar. So um, that's like 20% um, loss of value from um, around this time uh, last year. I think that a lot depends on um, the recovery in the, in the oil market because that remains the major source of our foreign exchange. Um, to the extent that um, the, the oil prices are recovering, I believe that Central Bank of Nigeria will be able to meet um, its foreign exchange obligation and um, may also be able to ward off excessive uh, pressure on, on the exchange rate. Now, um, as I said earlier regarding the issue of trade, long term we have to look more fundamentally at um, how to build the kind of buffers, foreign exchange buffers from other sectors, not just from oil. I, I think that um, most currencies of the world this year will um, recover, and we'll see how that goes. But it might also be a good time for countries to accept some level of depreciation so as to make uh, their exports more competitive. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show and analyzing the economic outlook for the year 2021 for Nigeria. Dr. Iyabo Masha, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. She's the member of the Presidential Economic Advisory Council. Do have a restful day. Thank you very much.